Carolina Panthers win this game. Their second win of the year, 23-22. to They defend home turf. So for Carolina, because they won, we will look at their top five graded players first. We don't get to do this very often this season. Carolina, number one graded player here, Chuba Hubbard, with an 81.5 overall grade. Cornerback Dane Jackson with an 81.2. Uh, rookie tight end Jatavian Sanders with a 78.9. Cornerback Mike Jackson, a 78.8. And then cornerback J.C. Horn with a 72.6. Good day in the secondary here for the Carolina Panthers. Bryce Young in this game, a 77.8. And then on, on New Orleans side of things, Lucas Patrick with the, uh, was the top-graded player here with an 84.6. Offensive guard Nick Saldaveri with an 81.1. Safety Jordan Howden with a 79.7. Uh, offensive guard Cesar Ruiz with a 79.2. Running back Alvin Kamara with a 73.2. And then Derek Carr in this game a 51.7. I'd be remiss if I didn't open up this segment by saying that Dennis Allen, their head coach, has been fired. Losing to Carolina. Charlotte broke the camel's back, right? Because, I mean, they were already struggling on a massive slide since starting the season 2-0. and Very clearly, we're not going in the right direction. And then lost to one of, if not the worst team in the NFL. Uh, that's just, that's, it's real. that's a tough pill to swallow, no matter how you look at it. Um, Seth, I will let you go first if you want to have a rant here about the New Orleans Saints or anything that you saw in this game. No, I think I'm actually like kind of a Dennis Allen apologist to a certain degree because that's tough. <laughs> yeah, it's it's my it's my worst trait. Uh, <laughs> but I, I because I look at Dennis Allen and, and I've told I've told this to you before. I've told some other people like this is a guy who's put together a really good defense over mm -hmm. over his time in New Orleans and really turned around the defense in in 17. Like he'd already been there for a couple of years, but it really turned the defense around in 17 and gave and gave life to the Saints at the end of the Drew Brees career and they were really the best team in football over from 17 to 19 basically in that three-year stretch the defense got older they couldn't they could only replace through the draft and they hit some they hit some good players but they didn't hit um completely elite players in the draft as much as they needed and and some guys got older and Cam Jordan got older and Tyron Matthew got older and Demario Davis got older though he's what a player he is still. Yeah, still playing really um, good. And, and all that stuff happened. So that defense was never going to be as good as it, it was. It just it was always going to drop off. And that officially did happen. I don't think that's – you know, he's clearly a good coordinator on defense. There's no doubt. But what he did was he tied himself to, to Derek Carr. And you don't want to do that. You just don't want to tie yourself to Derek Carr. And, right. and, and that's not and, – and that's the problem here. Like, he is clearly a good – football coach in terms of coordinating a defense I, I don't know what it's like in the locker room him as a head coach I don't want to speak on that um, when you start losing games everyone thinks it's bad culture and whatever Just because, but you're losing games because your offensive line is no good the Ramchick and, and McCoy Abbott has really hurt this team and yeah, I think like, that that's, yeah. that's worth that is worth noting as sort of like context here is Ryan Ramchick not being able to play the entire season. I don't know how much they knew beforehand, but, it, you know, if this was in the cards or not. But they draft Talese Fuanga in the first yeah. round. So they already had Trevor Penning, too. So they sort of, like, already knew that this was going to be a possibility. So they sort of did whatever they could do. And at the beginning of the year, uh, Fuanga was playing well. They were able to sort of mitigate some of maybe the pass rush deficiencies that he had. Your interior offensive line was playing well. Lucas Patrick was playing well. Uh, I think McCoy was sort of the glue yeah. that, that the, brought everything together. And then he gets hurt. Ramchick's not there. So Lisa Fuanga loses, misses time. And now it's it's just completely unraveled up front for them, which is, it, I think it's worth noting. I think Clint Kubiak did a good job early in the season of squeezing as much juice as he could out of that roster. Now the two receivers are really good. Um, uh, Olave and Shahid, who mm -hmm. aren't going to basically play for the rest of the season. And they've, they both missed a lot of time, but when they're there together, they're a great duo. I, this is a failure of Mickey Loomis and the front office more than, than Dennis Allen. I'm sorry. Like it, 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 it's really like that. Again, a lot of that is on Dennis Allen wanting to bring in Derek Carr. But if you're Mickey Loomis, you can just be like, no, we're not going to do that. Like, I, I, I get there has to be like a good relationship between the head coach and the, and the general manager. But like, this is a failure of, of the cap and everything like that with Mickey Loomis at the forefront. I think that needs to change as well if the Saints team is ever going to get back to being the team that I like to watch. I, I think the problem they had is having a good team and then having Breeze retiring. Okay, you see this this can happen. and We thought it was kind of happening with the Chargers until, you know, and they had the fifth overall pick last year is 
when you're a team that's just good enough to win seven or eight games a year but not bottom out, it hamstrings you, especially with as, as poor as the Saints' cal- salary sure. cap situation sure. is. They can't really go out and buy any players that can help them, any veterans. They're drafting in the middle of the first round and not hitting on a ton of them. I, I think back especially to – Especially on offense. Especially on offense. They're not hitting on them. I mean, it, it's, it's a situation where they have tried for as long as they can to not have a tank season. And now they're in the middle of a tank season. Yeah, was, this was not, like the accidental tank, which is, yeah. which is like – like it sucks. I, I like watching the Saints and I like it when they win, but at the same time, like this is, it can officially you can put the nail in the coffin, yeah, of this kind of era that started in two thousand six. And you, well, and you mentioned I think too about twenty seventeen and how it's a lot of the same actors, right? Especially it's the same. about Latimer. Well, it's his eighth year in the NFL now. Seven, like, like Dennis Allen coming in and like cha- and, and changing the defense because that was obviously one of the worst defenses in like fifteen and sixteen is one of the worst defenses of all time, really. Yep. Um, and that, Allen was there, but he helped change it. But the 17 draft. Yep. That was one of the greatest drafts. It's one of, of the greatest time. drafts of all time. And they just haven't done, they just haven't, not even close right. to that. I mean, you're talking about like drafts where they, they don't hit on, on basically on maybe one player and like a third round player. Yeah. Where you're like, yeah, he's a good player, but he's not an elite player that's going to change who you, who, what you can do on offense or defense. So that's kind of, again, it is a failure of the front office and Mickey Loomis more than I think it's a failure on, on Dennis Allen. Uh, who was given a bad situation? For. It's, it's a team when Breeze retired had no direction. Yeah. For uh, for anybody that doesn't know the Saints 2017 draft class off the top of your head, Marshawn Lattimore, Ryan Ramchick, Marcus Williams, Alvin Kamara, Alex Anzalone, Trey Hendrickson. That's so. insane. That's, <laughs> That's like, right. like when That's you when you say is. the one of the best all time, that is literally one of it's the best. One of all the greatest class. draft classes ever. Yeah. That's considering what all of those players became. Yeah. And, and they were all on the same team. Yeah. Now name me an elite player since then that they drafted. There's not many. They're just isn't meant an elite player yeah uh next year it was demarcus davenport traquan smith but they Rick don't Leonard, even hear, here, here's the thing about that eric mccoy yeah was mccoy in mccoy. 2019 yeah. because cj gardner johnson was in the fourth round he's a good player yeah, he's because a good of all the he's a good okay. players he's a, because of all the times they traded up though yeah they had less darts to throw at the wall no uh, they, yeah they had less chances to even grab elite uh, they had, they had there's four, been years where they, they had, had four, four they picks. had four total picks in 2020 yeah. cesar ruiz yeah. nick zach bond adam troutman uh, then it's it's Peyton Turner, it's Pete Warner. Who Pete Warner's good. Pete Warner's a good player for sure. Uh, I think Adebo is can be good. Yeah, he just started as well, for sure. Yeah. Right, and then in 2022, Olave is yeah, elite. Olave is elite player. He's for an sure. elite player. Then it's Trevor Penning and Alante Taylor. Not an who, elite player. <laughs> uh, Dalton hates Alante Taylor. I think I think I like him more than Dalton does. But and then this draft is sort of okay. So the 20 the 2023 draft, and we'll get to this game. I promise. Carolina Panthers. We don't have to get to this game. <laughs> um, the 2023 draft. It's Brian Brzee. Isaiah Foskey, Kendrick Miller, who's almost cut at this point, Nick Saldaveri, who's playing but basically has to play yeah. just because he has to play, Jake Hayner, Jordan Howden, who is, who is now a starter for you, who yeah. I think is a good player. But to me, that was the draft you needed. Like you really – if you were going to continue this thing, that 2023 draft had to be like stellar. And it, I don't think it was really like the class no. for it to be stellar because this past draft, I mean, they picked first round, second round, and then not until the fifth round – I like Talisa Fuanga. I like Kool Aid And then you Me too. pick Spencer Rattler in the fifth. Like, Love I like that. all those picks. Love that. But it's just not enough to save the team. Anyways, let's get to this game. A stat that told the story for me. I want to give a shout out to the Carolina Panthers. Three for three in the red zone against the Saints this past week. 85% red zone conversion percentage for the Carolina Panthers over the last three games. Like, they're really turning around from what it was at the beginning of the season. 65% now on the year. That's, I think, a top 10 mark in the NFL when it comes to red zone, red zone conversion percentage. So, they're sort of figuring this thing out. They, they, they're they getting in a groove, especially when space is at a premium. And I think that is a big reason why they, they, they won this game. Obviously, Bryce Young is, is a big reason why as well. He's my most impressive, how he's been able to bounce back. 75.2 passing grades, the second highest of his career over the last two years. Two big time throws, one turnover worthy play. And then this stat I loved 86.1 passing grade versus single coverage against the New Orleans Saints. When you are passing against single coverage, that can that can mess with your mind. And I think that had really messed with his mind throughout the majority of the first two years that he has been a starter. He has not wanted to attempt quote-unquote NFL open throws. You know, like some of those throws, that, and I'm not saying that everybody has to be Stafford, Stafford special, but like I'll throw Geno in there as well. That 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 Seattle 
versus uh, Los Angeles game that we saw yesterday. I mean, it is just layered, beautiful throws against single coverage where you have to go give your guy a chance to win. And I did not feel like Bryce Young was comfortable giving his guys a chance to win as much as you needed to before he got benched. What we saw against the Saints, I felt like he was willing to do that. And I don't know if it's just because he feels like he's got nothing to lose at this point or whatever, but that's the attitude you need to win the football game. Now, I'm not saying that that means they're going to go 500 from here on out of the season. I still think they're going to lose more than they win. But that was at least good to see from Bryce Young here in this game. Yeah, I agree. I think what you have, a couple of things. What was concerning to me earlier in the year, I'll go with another one. Clean pocket passing grade in this game, 75.1. Fantastic, maybe not, but it was his best of the season. And I thought there was just a better rhythm. It looked like earlier in the year we talked about he was afraid to throw the football. You just mentioned it. It looks like like there's there's a point in every pass play for the most part when you go there's a where it's like now now they have to throw the football okay this is this is the moment and there was times earlier in the year where you'd be like okay now and he would throw it and he would just be standing there in the pocket just afraid to throw it in this game I felt like there was just a better rhythm and it was a more decisive Bryce Young and he has to be that level of decisive because obviously with a smaller frame he doesn't have a big arm you can see it on tape he obviously doesn't have a Josh Allen Justin Herbert type of arm he has to be on time I thought he was he was on time more often in this game maybe than I've seen him at least since any point this year and maybe going back to late last year when it was maybe starting to get a little better but then it kind of broke down on him still so I, I'm with you I thought Young was a lot better in this game and I thought Carr this this was a tough return for him obviously it was a tough it was a tough game for the entire Saints team but 51 passing grade from Carr 54.5 from a clean pocket and look I, I think it's clear at this point I know Clint Kubiak's put it together he got the early jolt but only two deep completions one of them actually somewhere in the down near the red zone at like the 17 and the other one was a post at exactly 20 yards take away the deep ball the home runs from this offense and obviously you know you mentioned Shahid and Olave both hurt and Shahid especially was so important with this they don't have a deep threat and the other thing I'll say about this Saints offense when they get in the shotgun they are not a threat to anybody all uh, there let me let me throw this in here under center they're the 10th highest graded offense in the league, okay, right? They get to the Kubiak stuff, the Shanahan stuff. They run it, play action. They get deep balls going, all that stuff. When they're in the shotgun, they're the fifth worst. They, there's just nothing. There's nothing there. When they get in the gun, and you mm -hmm. know Derek Carr is throwing the football, I mean, literally, I, I watch their offense, and every play they get in the gun, I go, nothing's going to happen here. They're not a threat in the shotgun, in the pistol, whatever you prefer. It, it's nothing. Under center, old school Kubiak stuff. Pretty good at it, better at it when they were healthy, but just they, they get in the gun as there's nothing. And you put them in obvious passing situations, and I really think there's just nothing to worry about other than a Camara check down. Anything else before we move on? Uh, most impressive, Alvin Kamara. I mean, he, he tried. 35 touches, 215 yards. <laughs> I, I, I mean, he tried. I, I mean, good, to be honest He's with good. you, if, if they hadn't signed him to a two year extension because of their cap situation, this would have been the perfect game to trade him today off of. Mm. This this would have been today would have been the perfect sell high day to trade Alvin Kamara to a contender. But you just signed him to this two year extension, just trying to create cap space. Yeah, we know what this what is, is about. He but, also, uh, I, it does seem like he wants to stay. Like he does lo like New Orleans and wants to stay in New Orleans. Like I, so I get that part of, of it as well. But yeah, when you're wasting a 215 yard day from Alvin Kamara by. Yeah. By the quarterback. Stuff.